Hello bookworms, I'm Hannah and today I'm doing a spotlight review of a fantastic book that was just released on June 13th. That book is The Prey of Gods by Nikki Drayden, a paranormal urban fantasy set in South Africa. The year is 2064, the genetic engineering industry is flourishing, robots do all of the menial labor and the human race is healthy and thriving. But an indigo-colored hallucinogenic drug known as Godsend that causes unusual side effects is making its way across the country. One robot has just experienced its first inkling of artificial intelligence, and a power-hungry woman with supernatural abilities is hard at work consuming human lives to regain her full strength. Now that's a good setup. Before I go further into the book, we need to talk about this wicked cool cover art. Honestly, the cover art is what drew me to this book in the first place. I wrote to Nikki Drayden on Twitter asking her who is the cover artist, and she replied, Brennick Adams. Check out his website, his work is fabulous! Exclamation point. So I did check out his website, and Drayden is right, his work is fabulous. I'll drop a link to his website down below, and I encourage all of you to check it out, especially if you're a fan of Batman, Superman, Tomb Raider, The Wizard of Oz, or Star Wars. This incredible cover art registered in my mind as a promise, a huge promise, that this book would have unorthodox characters, a unique setting, and a killer story. I was really hoping this book would deliver on that promise, and I am happy to say it did. The Prey of Gods is told in the third-person perspective and follows five characters who each have their own unique idiosyncrasies. There's Moosey, a gay teenager who's navigating his first real relationship and just got his hands on Godsend for the first time, and Nambula, a little girl with golden eyes and a very big secret. There's Councilman Stoker, a man who leads a double life, working by day to oversee the Department of Economic Affairs, Environment, and Tourism, and working by night as, well something entirely different. There's Raya, a world-renowned pop singer and diva who has some mega daddy issues, and Sydney. She likes to eat humans. There's one more character who occasionally gets their own chapters, but I'll let you make the thrilling discovery of who for yourself. All of these characters are drawn together for various reasons, and the entire book is the story of what draws them together, how some of them unite, and how others clash on an absolutely epic scale. Let me give you a little taste of what lies in store if you read this book. Those old movies have become her escape from this dull excuse for an existence. She watches her television now, wrapped in her hovel of an apartment, as the corny old-time music crackles through her stereo speakers. She laughs at the slapstick comedy and tries to put her crappy day at the nail salon behind her, while avoiding thoughts of the custodial overseer job she'll go to this evening. Please comes a weak voice from the man currently stretched across her coffee table. I beg of you, let me go. And then there's that distraction. Sydney's surprised he still has the strength to speak, much less the will to live with all the hell she's put him through. Skin flayed like a tuna, legs bent at half a dozen impossible angles. She tunes his moaning out and savors the fear lapping at his skin like viscous waves breaking on the beach after an oil spill. She absorbs it, foul, thick, and dark. The only reason I gave this book a 4 star review instead of 5 is because there were some noticeable holes in the plot, particularly in the last quarter of the book. A few new world rules emerged that felt like they came out of nowhere, some of the characters' actions contradicted earlier passages in the book, and a couple of minute things were left unexplained, but these were small offenses that did not subtract from my overall enjoyment of the book. If they had, I wouldn't be doing this video review. The Prey of Gods explores themes of tampering with nature and the value of sentient life with wry humor. This book drops science fiction, fantasy, mythology, an urban setting, and paranormal entities into a magical cocktail shaker, mixes everything together, and pours out a weird and wonderful beverage for your consumptive pleasure. If you're looking for something different to read, look no further because it's right here. This book is already available for purchase and I'm confident it will prove to be one of the most unusual books you read this year. If you're planning to read The Prey of Gods, I want to know which zany detail about this book grabbed your attention. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks everybody!